This is my grandfather's car, a Hyundai Santro. That means a lot to me for many reasons. I grew up with this car. I went to school in it. I learned to drive in it. And today, I've successfully converted it to a fully electric car. Hopefully, the first of many such conversions. In this video, I'm going to show you how I converted the car all on a tight budget and why I think this is the simplest EV conversion possible. Before we can jump into how this conversion technique is so simple, we need to understand how an internal combustion car even works and the problems we would face if we just replaced the engine with a motor. This is a toy model of a four-stroke engine, just like the one in the Santro. Combustion inside the engine causes these pistons to move up and down. This up and down motion is converted to rotational motion for the wheels by the crankshaft here. If you look over here on this side, you'll also see that the engine powers this pump and this compressor. The pump is what gives you power steering and the compressor is what runs your AC. Something that's um, definitely nice to have in our weather. Well, if we just replace the engine with a motor, how will we spin our AC compressor and power steering pump? Easy, just stick two more electric motors in there. One for the power steering pump and one for the compressor. But that's three motors and three controllers and that's a lot of wiring for future Mihir to do. Also, we'd have to machine out custom parts to hold all these motors and controllers in the Santro, and that can get very expensive very fast. Remember, we're trying to keep this as simple and as cheap as possible. So, this is what we came up with. Instead of removing the whole engine, we only removed the top half, called the cylinder head, and we removed the pistons because we didn't really need those anymore. While leaving in the lower half of the engine does add weight, it makes our job much simpler. All we have to do now is make one simple L-shaped motor mount to mount our motor atop the remaining engine block. Now, we can power the AC compressor, the power steering pump and the wheels of the car with just one motor and one motor controller. Future Mihir loves the sound of that. While this isn't a perfect model, you get the idea. Now, let's see what this looks like inside the real car. It all started with the easiest part of this project, ripping apart the front of the car and pulling the engine out. Putting it all back together was a problem for future Mihir to solve. We then removed the engine head and mounted our motor on top of the engine block. We then slipped the timing belt back on and all that was left to do was smush it all back into the car. To power the motor, we have the most expensive part of the car sitting in the trunk the lithium ferrophosphate battery. The battery provides 72 volts to the motor controller in the front, which then powers the actual motor. To charge the car, I thought it would be fitting to have the charging point stick out of what used to be the fuel port. Well, we now have a car that drives with AC and power steering with only one motor. Pretty neat. But we still had two more fires to put out. The first, the brakes. Turns out, stopping a 900 kilo car moving at 60 kilometers per hour is pretty hard. To solve this problem for traditional petrol-powered cars, car manufacturers came up with the brake booster. Sitting behind your steering wheel, the brake booster uses a vacuum created by the engine to assist you in pressing the brake. But now that our engine isn't engineing anymore, we had no vacuum. To fix this, I installed an electric vacuum pump. This takes 12 volts from the car battery and sucks the air out of the brake booster. When you hit the brakes, the brake booster releases some of that vacuum to help you stop faster, and the vacuum pump automatically turns back on to maintain that vacuum. The second fire was charging the 12 volt car battery that powers the vacuum pump, the lights in the car, the power windows, and stuff like the central locks. Internal combustion cars use their engine to also rotate a generator called the alternator to keep this 12 volt battery charged. However, since we don't have an engine anymore, the best way to charge our 12 volt battery is by using this guy, a 72 to 12 volt converter. This takes the 72 volts from the big battery in the back and converts it to a nice 12 volts to keep our battery in the front topped up. And that's it. That's the conversion. Since this was the first time we were converting this car, we had to pull out the engine to figure out the finer details of what modifications we had to make to the engine. What's interesting is that if we were to do this again, or perhaps you were to do this to your own old car, 
you can actually access all the parts of the engine we're modifying with just a floor jack. No engine hoist, no car lift, and no need to even remove the engine. Our end output is the perfect city car. With an 80 km range and a top speed of 60 km per hour, you'll fit right into the Gurgaon traffic. Even assuming 10 rupees per unit of electricity, your cost per kilometer works out to less than 1 rupee. With petrol prices these days, that's a pretty tempting offer. This conversion technique is by no means perfect. It was a pretty neat idea and was worth testing it out. What's interesting is that to keep costs down, we put in a severely underpowered motor. This car has a staggering 8 full horsepower. It's five times weaker than when it was a combustion car. The reason we can get away with this is because we still have the gearbox. Slip it into first to get the torque you need to get going, and then you can chill in second or third gear. The other interesting thing is that since we left the engine block and crankshaft in, the car still needs engine oil. It's an electric car with a gearbox and engine oil. It took me a while to process that, but hey, he's driving just fine. This project was inspired by my longtime mentor, James Abraham, and would not have been possible without the most talented mechanic I've ever met, Ustad. As always, you can find more technical details about the build on my website, link below, and my email is always open for questions. I would love nothing more than to be a part of your switch from dinosaur bones to electric power. If you ever see a suspiciously quiet Santro on the streets of Gurgaon, stop by and say hi. Till then, keep building, keep tinkering, and I'll see you in the next one.